good afternoon FlossTube, it's Caroline here with you again. It is the Sunday the 5th of April um, 2020. I uh, record, decide, I finally got myself together to record a new, another FlossTube. This YouTube video is about cross stitching, knitting, little bit of quilting and occasionally books, but no books today because I think I've got enough with everything else it being two months since I last recorded um, I didn't mean to stay away for quite so long but um, I already knew March was going to be busy so it would be a challenge to get a floss tube video in because it was my daughter's birthday and we were busy doing things and weekends were fully booked up uh, and then COVID-19 happened and life got even crazier for a little bit of time. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I work in a further education college. Um, we're now shut, but it was a bit mad getting everything to the point where we could all work at home. Um, so for the last two weeks, I have been working from home. The kids are at home because their school is shut. My husband is also working at home. So it's been a little bit challenging, um, but I think we're getting through it. We've now officially hit the Easter holidays for the schools and for myself, so I don't have to work for the next two weeks and the kids don't have, have to do any schoolwork. I think my daughter is going to do some schoolwork because she's she just enjoys her schoolwork. Um, but other than that we're safely ensconced at home i hope everyone else watching this is also doing the same or in a position to be able to do the same and if you're not thank you for going back out to work keeping going and i hope every you're keeping as safe as you can be because i'm well aware that there are plenty of people who still need to still can't have to go out to work um otherwise I'm not getting a huge amount more time to do stuff. I mean, hopefully I will this next two weeks because like I said, I do have to actually do some work. Um, but not running around after the kids of an evening has made a big difference and not having to commute. I normally takes me a couple of hours. Um, I have an hour commute to and from college normally. And, um, the kids normally have something on every evening so we're running around playing mum and dad's taxi normally um, without having them I'm getting a bit more stitching time um, which you will see and knitting time which you will see as we go through um, anyway thank you for watching um, thank you for all the likes and comments um, I very much appreciate them if you'd like to subscribe feel free um, the, you can find me around the internet. I am at Caroline A. Kemp, and Caroline is spelled with a K, um, on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and show notes for this episode will be on my blog, which is carolinescorner.blogspot.com. Right, shall we start with the stitching as usual? Um, I actually have found a time, a little bit of time in the last couple of months to finish, finish something. So this, you won't have seen on the floss tube because I stitched it back in 2015, is Switch Stitches Fob from Shepherd's Bush. I think it was probably their year, one of their yearly fobs. And as I said, I did all the stitching back in 2015. And finally, because they're not hard to finish off the fobs, I mean everything bar the ribbon trim is pretty straightforward. Um, and I finally dragged it off the finishing pile in the last couple of months. So very pleased to have got that done. I've put it in my spring display because I think the colours are really springy. Very, very much the uh, Shepherd's Bush palette there. 
the only thing it's missing is a little sheep really um, so yeah so very glad to have that one off the pile and um, on to the finished objects list rather than the to be finished lists um, so next up what have, what have I been working on I have no actual finishes but hopefully soon I will have first up I know you all like seeing Dorothy I've been working on Dorothy Walpole still she is being stitched on 40 count pearlized barley linen from Lakeside this is in the grizzard on the Italian linen base um, that I'd had in my stash for quite a while. I don't think they do this anymore. Um, so this linen predates my children, which is my eldest is twelve. Right. So since you last saw it, I can't remember quite where I was. I have finished all this down this border, right down to the bottom down to the bottom guys um, so I can sort of sense that coming along <coughs> apologies I do have a cough it's nothing I think it's just allergies I've had a cough since half term in February when I got a cold and it's just never shifted um, so I can't remember where I was when I last showed you it I know I finished since then I finished the border and I've been working on these blue flowers and I'm onto this leaf which should have been further along but I discovered a counting mistake last night and had to frog hence why there's dangling threads everywhere um, but yes I think I was a bit distracted this week because I didn't get nearly as much progress on this one as I wanted um, as I said I'm stitching it on 40 count linen with the recommended DMC. Let's see if I can get, lean back far enough and you can get it all in. She's getting a bit big so it's very difficult to get her in. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's Dorothy. So very pleased to know where the bottom is, uh, to have actually hit the bottom of that border. I'm, do, I'm going to concentrate on finishing this huge spray of flowers in here, which is this one. And it sort of goes all the way down and all the way across. Um, there's quite a lot of it. So once I finish that one, I will come down the side of the other border and then I just have the little bits at the bottom to do. So I'm getting there, getting there. I'm hoping I'll get a finish this year, but we'll wait and see how that pans out, shall we? Right, so that's Dorothy. The other big sampler I've been working on is the Scottish sampler from the Good Heart Samplers book. Um, as I've said, before this is charted in the inside cover um, I don't have a picture of this completed sampler but here is the sampler in the book of the, the picture of the original from the Good Heart collection and I'm almost there see I am on to the Adam and Eve since you last saw it I completed the grass around the cat finished off a little motif with all the with the dog on and the birds and say and I'm on to the Adam and Eve so getting very very close to a finish on this one should I'm going to see if I can get it finished before May when I go on to Mania, but we shall see how we go. Yeah. Adam and Eve are quite funky colours, or Adam and the Snake are certainly. Um, 
this I was lucky enough to go to the um, seminar arranged by Needleprint to launch the Good Heart Samplers book at Ackworth School um, back in 2008. So this sampler has been on the go for 12 years and we were given the kit at the time. So I think this is lambswool linen, I'm not sure of the count. And we are sti stitching it and we were, the kit we were given was kitted up with needlepoint ink silks which were on this beautiful thread card with a print from a bit of the sampler. And my final whip for this last couple of months is with thy needle emblem of love and I'm doing the multicoloured version at the top um, this one I have did actually manage to get a fair bit done on the other week um, I stalled a little bit because I discovered a counting mistake in this motif down the bottom in that I had, I was out so it was skew with so obviously there had to be a lot of frogging there as well um, but I'm now about a quarter of the way done on this one because I got quite a bit done last time I picked it up I did all these little motifs Let me. so I stitched all these little motifs this big this half uh, medallion and got started on the next half medallion so I'm hoping next time I get it it comes around I will get this medallion finished and then there's a few more bits in there so this this one is being stitched on 32 count vintage Luna from Lakeside Linens that I had in my stash along with silks from hand dyed by Vicky Clayton um, unfortunately she's not dyeing silk anymore but um, the colours are beautiful muted palette um, is used for this uh, this particular design. I do have a couple of new starts since we last spoke. Because as, as mentioned in previous videos, I start a new piece on the first of every month. Um, so my new start for March was a little kit from Jackie Duplessis, it's finally finished and it's called Poppy Pouch um, it came as a full kit with the binding I've just done a little bit of the um, stems and the leaves and so Jackie had kitted it up with silk so the flowers will be these beautiful pinks when I get there. So that's now in the whip pile waiting for me to finish something so I can pull it back out. And then my new start for April is this old design by Kathy Barrick back when she was designing as Carriage House Samplers. It was a kit for Krynik and they, they had a little series called Remember the Ladies and it's called Girls Night Out um, and it came in a little box with the milk paint silks I think they, they did them to um, promote those silks um, I have a couple of kits from this uh, this series um, this one and one by Mary Gary um, which I've also started which was a thread keep so this is where my start because I just worked it on, on it on the front first. It's being stitched with the milk points milk paint silks. Um, it's tent stitch over one and the ch chart calls for 40 count fabric, but I was gifted this 36 count 
R&R &R, and it's called Dawn's Early Light um, by the person who gave me the, um, the kit which, which, which I was gifted it when it came out in 2003 and has been sat in my stash ever since. Um, so I made a little bit of start on the, the border. Again, a beautiful colour palette um, in the milk paint silks from Krynik. Um, I shall look forward to uh, getting back to that again when we get there. Now there has actually been a little bit of sash in the last couple of months. Um, it was Mother's Day here in the UK a couple of weekends ago and my kids normally buy me a sampler chart of some description. I drop some very heavy hints like give them a list. This is my wish list, buy something off it. Um, and I got Barbara Anna Designs the Snooty Parrot sampler which I will uh, forward to getting to at some point. It's been on my wish list for quite some time that one. And then I placed a little bit of an, a small order with traditional stitches um, as I wanted Paulette's Nashville exclusive um, Sweetheart Hill. There we go. I thought that was so pretty. So decided to get that and as well no chart can travel alone as we all know I also ordered Sarah's Basket by Chessie and me I can't remember who I whose video I saw this particular chart on I, can't, I think it would have been either Brenda and the Serial Starter or Carol at Saltbox Stitches one of those ladies had done it and I thought it was absolutely beautiful The only other thing I've had come in is some thread. I needed some more DMC, the new skein, more skeins of DMC for Dorothy Walpole. Um, and so I also bought some skeins of sampler thread that I need because I am kitting up. One of my new starts for Mania is going to be, I'm finally going to stitch um, Moonlight Garden by Blackbird Designs, one of their very first loose feather charts that I have in my stash and I needed some thread for them so you'll see that next month probably. Right I'm going to pause this for now and then we will I will sort out my knitting and quilting to show you. I'll be right back. Right I've got everything I need now. First though as we go into knitting I have only finished to show you. I finished and blocked because I wasn't that far away last time you saw it My Floating Shawl by Helen Stewart which is a half pie shawl with a lovely lace border lots of quite simple garter stitch which made it a very very easy knit um, especially when you need some sort of mindless knitting. So this pattern was the second pattern in the Shawl Society 4. Um, it is knit in Giddy Yarns, Giddy Sock, in the High Tide colourway. So this lovely pale blue with dark speckles all the way through it works really well on this shawl. Okay. And it's a beautiful shawl to wear. Um, right, so having cast a shawl off, I could cast one on. So I went to um, my stash pulled out some of the oldest yarn in there 
which I bought to knit, originally to knit my daughter a jumper from this book, The Drift Collection from Eden Cottage Yarns. She wanted, I did knit her the jumper, just not in the yarn I bought because she changed her mind about which colour she wanted. Um, so I did eventually knit two of these honeybee jumpers, one for each child. Um, but in the meantime, Rose, my daughter had originally chosen this bright pink fuchsia yarn for her jumper and then changed her mind. Fortunately, I have a wardrobe where of mainly navy and white and purple, so a bright fuchsia shawl doesn't look out of place. And it so happens that in the Drift Collection, there is a shawl pattern by Carrie Westerman. It's called the Swale Hap. There we go. Um, a traditional Shetland hat construction. You do the tri centre triangle, then you go on to the middle section and then there's the lace edging. It's all in garter stitch, this particular one. In a different colourway. Um, the book came out four years ago. That's how long I've had the yarn. Um, so as I had the fuchsia yarn, Anyway, I got a ball of charcoal. The yarn is Whitfeld DK, which is no longer no longer available. Just missed my coffee there, thankfully. Um, so the contrast stripes will be in the fuchsia, in the charcoal rather, with the fuchsia. Um, so yes, yeah, so this has been in my stash for four years finally got to the stage where I'm going to knit it. Um, making good progress to say I've only been knitting on this for a couple of three, 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 three weeks because I alternate my knitting so one week I knit on a shawl another week I knit on the, the cardigan which you'll see shortly. So I finished the central section and I've just started on the middle section um, so when I pick it up this week I will be starting in on the stripes. So yeah, so this is Whitfell DK which is a uh, baby alpaca, so it's beautifully soft. Um, I'm knitting this on 5mm Aldi Turbos, Aldi Turbos rather, not Aldi, Aldi's a supermarket. Super <laughs> food shopping's a little on everyone's mind at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. That's just hitting the spot at the moment. And I should, I think, possibly be well on with it by this time next. By the time I next record, um, given a day I'm getting a bit extra knitting time not commuting I say being on holiday for the next two weeks is definitely going to help on that score um, so say so I do one week on my shawl and then I do one week on the cardigan and the cat and I'm doing the sinister cardigan by Marna Gilligan of Anne Katzin Beg. This is my daughter. She decided she wanted the same colourway as the model. So you can see from where the progress keeper is where I was at last time I recorded. And so you can see I've finished the body now and I've made a start on this and I've picked up for one of the sleeves. So this week was doing the last few rows on the rib and starting the sleeve. Again, nice mindless knitting, which is kind of what you need at the moment. Um, yeah. So this is being knit in 
Kinross full ply. The grey colour is granite. The pink is orchid and the white is quartz. Loving knitting in this particular yarn. Um, and it's coming together quite well. My daughter is quite excited that she might have her cardigan soon. And the needles I'm using on this one are Knit Pro Symphony needles. Um, I'm, knit I'm using the 2.75 um, for most of it and the 2.25 for the ribbing. Which brings me on to my socks. There has been, I think last time I didn't show them because I actually knit on them, but there's been a bit more progress on the sock. Again, I put a progress keeper where I was last time I recorded. So I've got round the knee, the, yeah, round the knee, round the heel. Um, and I am just about to start the decreases for the toe. So this pattern is the Shell Cottage Socks by Helen Stewart from last year's Sock Society. I know it's not Helen's usual colour palette, hers are much more subdued and stuff, but I had this, I had this yarn in my stash. It's a Knitting Goddess yarn um, called Dark Morris from a yarn club she did back in 2016. Um, called Back to the Discworld. Um, my son, however, calls these my Ronnie the Rhino socks because the colours are remind him of Ronnie the Rhino, who is the um, mascot for our local rugby league team, Leeds Rhinos. Um, I'm fairly sure that's probably not the effect that Joy was going for when she dyed this colourway, but there we go. <laughs> Sorry about the abrupt change. My daughter decided to come in looking for some a box file because she's in the process of tidying her room. Um, right, so that was my socks. Um, On to, uh, there has been a little bit of quilting. Um, last time I recorded, I said I was, I, I sandwiched and quilted and I am in the process of attaching the binding. I have almost done um, almost a quarter of the way round on attaching the binding. Um, hopefully, because um, we're not going anywhere this Easter holiday, that will be, uh, that will get finished and then I will have one happy boy who will not be nagging me all the time in what way is this quilt not finished. Yeah, so he chose the colours they it's all shades of blues and greens um he we from i got them from simply solids a few years ago um quite good to get it be almost on the finish line on that one when i finished that quilt i signed up lisa who used to be one of the owners of simply solids before it closed um now runs something called the modern quilt club which does retreats and mystery quilts and this year I decided to sign up for one of her mystery quilts so I get these nice green boxes through the post once a month partly because I'm almost finished that one so I was no I was going to be able to get pretty much straight on with this so the Quilt is called the name of the rose, is what um, Lisa's called the quilt. It is by Sheila Christiansen, who is at Mystery Quilter on Instagram. Um, so it's going to be my most challenging quilt to date, but uh, what I get when I get Lisa's parcels. So the colour palette that I'm doing is called Lisa's name Vogue. Now I can't. I will have to look up who, which the what the um, fabric 
collections come from because I couldn't immediately find it when I was looking but they're very me colours. So this quilt is going to be for me because I've done one for my daughter, I've done one, I'm soon to finish one for my son, this one is for me. So once a month I get instructions with the clue and a pile of pretty fabric. So I get to practice my piecing without worrying about the cutting. So I think that will be a nice way, nice step up to way to up my quilting game. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting stuck in on that one when I finish binding Chris's quilt. Um, I think that's about it for now. So I shall leave you for the time being. Um, I'm hoping that everyone is staying at home, is safe, is just with crafters. We've got this social isolation thing covered because we've all got stashes. I'm looking forward to Matt's getting into some of mine and actually getting some stuff finished. I have a massive to read pile, so that's not going to be a problem either. Not killing my husband and children, that might be an issue, but so far I've managed not to do that. I've come close on one occasion when my husband broke my favourite mug. <sighs> However, so take care everyone. Um, I'm planning on recording again at the end of April before we get into mania. Um, I so say I'm going to do mania like I did last year. I'm going to have a new start every week. I'm not doing 31 new starts. And then the rest of the time I'm going to use a random number generator to work on one of my whips. So hopefully you'll get to see a lot of different stuff. So again, take care. Um, if you want to feel, the, feel you can subscribe, please do. And I will speak to you all towards the end of the month. Thank you. Goodbye.